However, through the book of Esther, we can see that although God's people can be driven to the verge of death by their enemies in the world, God has already made the way to escape. The same day they were supposed to face death and despair became the day of victory for the Jews and the day of destruction for their enemies. The Eternal and Unchanging Word of God One Story one story 50 Esther life of distinct people of God Esther chapter 1 to chapter 10 Sometimes it is helpful to read the Bible in historical chronological order but it is better to read and learn the Bible in the order in which it was edited therefore our Bible is not in a chronological order but arranged by subject in order of history books poetry books and prophets and in the same books of history there is a format like Deuteronomy and Chronicles that transcends time and New Testament also is in the order of the books of history book of a and book of prophets. Also, in the same Bible book, the order of time was changed from the perspective of the writer, as the four books of Gospels were recorded from different viewpoints of Jesus Christ. And in the book of John, the time arrangement is mixed. Therefore, we must know God's intention to speak to the Bible and we must know God's heart to the Word. The book of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, which deal with the story of the captivity, should be Ezra, Esther, Esther and Nehemiah in order of time. But the Bible is arranged in the order of Ezra, Nehemiah and Esther. We must not miss the flow of the whole Bible. Although these three books are the history of Israel, the history of Israel has already ended with the Kings and Chronicles, where Chronicles played a role of preparing the Messiah Jesus Christ to come through the David's dynasty. And these three books begin with the book of Ezra telling the story of the lives of people who embraced Embrace Jesus Christ who will come to the temple. Then the book of Nehemiah, a story that distinguishes it from the world by building a wall around the temple. And the book of Esther that tells a story of the lives of God's people centered around the temple but are distinguished in this world within the wall. If you look at the temple on a larger scale, it is in this world. Distinguishing it is not dividing. The temple is separated by walls and can only be assessed through the gate. Therefore, the gates of the temple are very important. After all, the temple is in the world but not of the world. Now, this is Esther, the story of the distinct people of God. We are going to go in. The Dignity of the King and His Country the beginning of the book of Esther describes the majesty of the Persian king and his country Persia of the time when the book of Esther was written. Although Persia was not a country that served God in history and the king of the time, King Xerxes was not a king that believed in God. But the Bible describes in detail the king of a nation and its dignity growing a section of the kingdom of God that will be fulfilled to Jesus Christ, the king of kings. Persia ruled by Xerxes at that time ruled a very large area and the king held a very large feast which was a feast for all and also a feast everyone attended. The feast revealed the dignity of the country for 180 days and even after this day the king held a feast for the king's people for seven days as well. Its splendor and abundance were endless and it was a feast of joy where everything was not forced but where each person did as they wish. Not only the king but Queen Vashti also gave a feast for the women. Vashti disliked following the king's orders. The three elements of a country are king, people, and land. Land includes not only the visible territory but also an invisible area. And the most important element of the country is the relationship between the king and the people. If the people completely obey the king, the relationship between the king and the people would be good and that nation would be a perfect nation. But if the people do not comply to the king completely and disobey the king, the relationship between the king and people would be bad so the people of that nation will perish. It was the last day of a feast that seemed to be of splendor, abundance and eternal joy of King Xerxes and his country. And the king wanted the Queen Vashti to be seen by all the people and local officials. The queen's appearance was good to see. However, when Queen Vashti disobeyed the king's command, the feast suddenly became a place of death. Eventually, Queen Vashti was deposed and the feast began with joy but ended with 
with anger. Vashti did not want to share the king's joy which was like rejecting to attend the wedding feast for the king's son. And this meant she was like the perished. And Vashti was like Israel as the people of God, the king who have completely obeyed God's commands and rather than to stay in their place, abandoned their precious place and were finally perished. The king loved Esther more than any woman. Vashti, who was the queen, was deposed and beautiful virgins from all over the country are gathered in the city of Sushan by the king's personal attendants to please the king instead of Queen Vashti. From the perspective of Israel, the people of the surrounding countries are Gentiles, but from the perspective of Persian country, Mordecai and Esther of the tribe of Benjamin, who are Gentiles, appear. This Mordecai and Esther were taken captive with the prophet Ezekiel during the second invasion of Babylon during the reign of Jehoiachin, where Jerusalem in southern Judah was destroyed. And Esther participated in the process of choosing a queen. And after going through all the procedures, she was finally chosen as queen. This was because the king loved Esther more than any other woman. And again, there was a king's feast and feast for Esther. This feast was the joy of the father who found his lost sheep, Rajma, and son. Recorded in the Book of the Annals after Esther became queen, Mordecai informed Esther of the conspiracy of the court officials to assassinate the king. And Esther informed the king, giving credit to Mordecai. It was investigated, proven, and the officials were hung on a tree and killed. And the facts were recorded in the king's books of the annals. Do as you please. After that, King Xerxes raised the position of Haman, the Agagite, and placed it above all those with him. Agagite people were descendants of Agag, king of Amalek. Now all the servants bowed down to Haman, but Mordecai neither kneeled nor bowed down. And when it was revealed that Mordecai was a Jew, Haman thought that it was not enough to kill Mordecai alone, and decided to destroy everyone from the people of Judah. Haman and the crowd asked the king to set a day to destroy the Jews, and the king said, do as you please. Eventually, Haman obtained a decree from King Xerxes and on the 13th day of the Adar month, he decided to destroy all the Jews, men and women, regardless of age, and seize their property. The decree was released and the city of Susa was bewildered. Although Haman was placed above everyone, he could not do anything without the king's permission. Although King Xerxes allowed Haman to do anything without knowing his true intentions with the permission of the king, King, Haman was able to issue a decree and act on it. And this is like Satan needing God's permission to proceed with the plan of killing Job, the one representing God's people. If I perish, I perish. Mordecai and the Jews who learned all this wore sackcloth and covered themselves with ashes, and there were countless people lying in the ashes, and eventually Esther knew of all this as well. Mordecai told Esther to go to the king and seek earnestly for the Jews, but no one was allowed to go before the king without the king's calling. If the king saw those who have come in and did not hold out the gold scepter, they were to be killed, and if he held out the gold scepter, they could live. And it was said that Esther has been unable to come to the king for 30 days. Then Mordecai said, Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So finally Esther said, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. What is your request? What is your petition? After asking God for mercy, Esther wore the queen's robe and come to the king's court. However, because God has already softened the king's heart, he saw her and was pleased. He said to Esther, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom it will be given you. 
Then asked to prepare the king a banquet and asked him to come with him man. And the king went to ask his banquet with him man, who had been called in haste. At the banquet, the king said to Esther again, Now, what is your petition? It will be given you. And what is your request? Even up to half the kingdom it will be granted. Then Esther asked him to come with her man to another banquet she will prepare for tomorrow. Her man, not knowing where Esther was from, probably returned home as he was the only one invited with the king to the queen's banquet. On the way back, he saw Mordecai and discussed with his people. And he built a pole fifty cubits high to hang Mordecai. Now the foundation to recover from the despair that the Jews would face was laid. The king will held out the golden scepter to Esther and join Esther's banquet and will do so again tomorrow. And now was the next step. This should be done for the man the king delights to honor. Between the first banquet of Queen Esther and the second banquet the next day, the incident of King's Court records that God prepared at the end of chapter 2 of the book of Esther took place. That night the king couldn't sleep so he ordered the court's book of the chronicles to be read. Then the king learned that a man named Mordecai reported the two former officials who formed a conspiracy to assassinate the king. The king knew he had not given any honor or respect to Mordecai yet and asked a man who at that time Time came in the court to ask for permission to hang Mordecai on that pole. What should be done for a man the king delights to honor? And Haman, who misunderstood by himself, thought that he was the man and told the king the best treatment. Then the king commanded, Get the robe and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. Do not neglect anything you have recommended. And Haman did to Mordecai just as the king's commanded. This was clearly a trailer for the upcoming main story, a situation that anyone who had a perception would have seen coming. Even Haman's people knew it. And again Haman hastily attended the death banquet prepared by Esther and at this place the king said to Esther again, Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom it will be granted. Then Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition. And spare my people. This is my request. Telling Haman's plans to kill the Jews and the king finally ordered Haman to be hanged on the pole that Haman made to to kill Mordecai. That day they avenged their enemy. With the death of enemy who wanted to exterminate the Jews, the situation reversed and King Xerxes gave Esther the house of Haman, an enemy of the Jews, and Esther made Mordecai manage Haman's house. The decree that was issued to annihilate the Jews was withdrawn, and the king granted a new decree saying, The king's edict granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and protect themselves, to destroy, kill, and annihilate the armed men of any nationality or province who might attack them, and their women and children and to plunder the property of their enemies. The Jews had glory, happiness, joy, and dignity, and the native people feared the Jews, and there were many even becoming Jews. The enemies of the Jews wanted to get rid of them, but the tables turned, and it was the Jews who got rid of them. And in addition to Haman, who was already hung on the tree, his twenty sons were killed and hung. The Jews killed their enemies, but did not touch their property. The Bible says, For Haman's son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to destroy them. And had cast the pearl that is the Lord for their ruin and destruction. But when the plot came to the king's attention, he issued written orders that the evil scheme Haman had devised against the Jews should come back onto his own head, and that he and his sons should be impaled on poles. The Jews celebrated these two days when the day of death turned into a day of victory. This Purim day was never abolished among the Jews, and their descendants continued to celebrate it. Work for the good of his people. In the book of Esther, Esther, who made a decision to say, If I perish, I will perish, appeared as a representation of Jesus Christ because she played the role of saving the Jews in a situation where they had no choice but to die by the king. In addition, although living in the land of the Gentiles by not bowing to anything other than God according to God's law, not only himself but also when the Jews were in danger of dying. And so finally, Mordecai, who sat in the place next to the king and rose from the law, 
lowest to the most honorable for God's sovereign ministry is also a representation of Jesus Christ. In particular, Mordecai, who tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly, wore the king's clothes, rode on the king's horse, put on the king's crown, and was exalted on the city streets as a man the king delights to honor. And after the death of adversary Haman, he went before the king in a blue and white robe, a large gold crown, and a purple robe of fine linen. In addition, he was honored in the royal palace and became more prosperous, his fame spreading throughout the provinces. And finally, the Bible says, Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to King Xerxes preeminent among the Jews and held in high esteem by his many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of all the Jews. God's work can only be known through faith. We have to be careful here. The book of Esther must be understood in the order of chapter 3 and then chapter 2 and chapter 1 before coming to the incident of chapter 4. We are so obsessed with one verse and make a logic of if we make a decision to perish, pray, fast and do something like Esther did, God will do it. But the Bible does not say it like that. Now from chapter 5 the recovery of this event will unfold and in chapter 3 before Esther's decision in chapter 4, Haman the Agagai who wanted to kill the Jews gained a worldly position and a plan to destroy the Jews appeared. However, the situation recovery of chapter 5 started from the incident recorded in the palace records where Mordecai saved the king. And this incident was told to the king through Esther which was possible because Esther was already the queen in chapter 2. In addition, Esther made the decision, if I perish, I perish. And it seems like she is holding the key to solve this. But Esther was able to ascend to the position of the queen and tell the king the whole incident because in chapter 1 the former queen Vashti was deposed from the queen's position by rebelling against the king's orders. Therefore the protagonist of the book of Esther is neither Esther nor Mordecai. God had already set up the stage for the dethronement of Vashti in history, made Esther more lovable in the eyes of the kings, made the incident of Mordecai exposing the officials who wanted to kill the king be recorded in the palace records and then set Haman's appearance. We know because we are outside that history, but Esther, Mordecai and the Jews who were in history at that time did not know. It cannot be known by knowledge, but only by faith. Esther, the last book of history in the Old Testament, is over. The temple of God was built and the temple was built, but there were hardships where the walls were destroyed and by rebuilding the wall, the lives of the people who embraced the temple were in this world, but distinguished from the world. But that life is by no means easy. This is because they are still in this world. Mordecai, the Jewish man, was taken captive to the land of the Gentiles, but was not assimilated into the world. His distinguished life that was embraced God was attacked by the adversaries and placed the Jews in danger of being destroyed. This is because they are still in this world. Likewise, the end of the world will become the day of destruction for those who have threatened God's people with power in this world. And for God's people who seems like they are in danger of death, will have the day of resurrection on the day the Lord finally comes. Now the day is coming. Still, the world thinks that this world is everything and those with more power try to show off their power. But the Lord who will come will make God's people stay a little longer on this earth, but He will surely come. The story of Jesus Christ who will come as the Lord of that day, for that very day, the story of God's zeal and love continues.